Greetings and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Carl Spirits. I'm Carl, and I want to welcome you. Tonight, we are going to be evaluating Old Elk Blended Straight Bourbon. This is Old Elk Blended Straight Bourbon, and this is a product of Colorado. Yeah, sort of. Let me explain. So in 2013, Kurt Richardson, he is the creator, the founder, the CEO of Otterbox. You probably have one in your pocket right now, an Otterbox for cell phones. Kurt Richardson developed that product and he decided in 2013 that he was going to develop a second product. And this time he had an idea for a legacy bourbon. And he has this vision but he does not have the skills or the distilling experience to make it a reality. He soon met Greg Metz. Now, Greg Metz, as you may know, is a longtime bourbon staple. Greg Metz uh, spent 38 years at MGP. He retired as their master distiller. In fact, when he started, it was actually called Seagram's in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Over time, it became LDI, it became MGP, and when he retired or left MGP, he was their master distiller. 38 years, started back in the 70s. Richardson and Metz met up, no pun intended there, and they discussed this idea for a bourbon. And Metz really jumped at this opportunity to create something new, uh, something different than the mash bills that he had been accustomed to creating or using rather for MGP for all those years. And the mash bill that he creates is actually quite frankly, very unique in the bourbon world. He wanted something very, and this is Richardson's words now, smooth to drink and with discussion, discussions with Metz, they finally hit upon what they could do to make this bourbon a smooth drinking bourbon. And what he did, Metz is going to increase the malted barley percentage as much as possible. At the same time, he's subtracting the amount of corn. So he's sacrificing a little sweetness for those smooth flavors of that malted barley. The result is this mash bill that is 51% corn, the bare minimum you can have and still be called bourbon, 15% rye to give it just a touch of spiciness, and 34% malted barley. That's right, you heard me correctly, 34% malted barley. So the juice is actually produced in three locations, MGP in Indiana being one, an undisclosed uh, place in Colorado, or I'm sorry, in Indiana, and then in Old Elk is actually producing a little bit of that product themselves in Colorado. All of it is then, after aging, is shipped to Colorado for blending and bottling. So we actually have three different juices from three different places using the same mash bill. It's all blended for consistency, and this is the result. The Old Elk Blended Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Now, Old Elk is currently uh, in the production of their own product. As I mentioned earlier, they're now ramping up production and they're, they're to the point where a lot of their juice is approaching that four year threshold. That's what this juice is, is four years old. So they're, they're in the next year or so, we should be seeing actual Old Elk product that is from Old Elk in Colorado. One other thing here about what sets Old Elk apart for some, from some of its competitors. They use what is called the slow cut process to proof down their bourbon. So when distilleries want to proof down a bourbon, they're gonna add water. And this is usually done over a period of a few days, a day or two actually. Old Elk, they water it down slowly over several weeks. And according to Old Elk literature, what this does, it helps preserve the original flavors, the amount of heat produced. It cuts down that heat so it doesn't burn off some of those original flavors. So there's the Old Elk story. 
Now, there's nothing too fancy in that story, is there? There's uh, no fanciful historical tale of the founder's great-grand somebody uh, shooting the last elk in the county or last elk in the state and then deciding, I'm going to create a bourbon to honor that great achievement. It's none of that. It's just a story about an entrepreneur who had a vision, who knew what he wanted, and he hired the right man to make his vision a reality. Now, I love a great brand story for bourbon. I love the history. But you know I can respect when they don't sugarcoat it and they tell you the truth either. I think you've picked that up if you've watched some previous videos by me. In fact, at this point, if you haven't, why don't you go back and look at some of those previous videos, like them, subscribe to the channel, get updates for future episodes of Carl's Spirits. So let's go ahead and dive into some old elk and give it a good taste. Now remember, the mash bill on this is 51% corn, the bare minimum you can have and still be called a bourbon. It is 15% rye and 34% malted barley. Now, in the glass, we have a very orange coppery color. And the legs are actually, they're not the thickest, they're not the thinnest, they're really average, but they stick, they are not moving. They hit that glass and they just stick there. So that's kind of cool. Now this is also an 88 per, or I'm sorry, an 88 proof bourbon. So it is not a high proof. So those sticky legs are kind of uh, kind of unusual to be quite honest. And this comes in at four years old. I think some of the newer bottles come in right at five years old, but this particular one I think is at four years. So on the smell, wow, the aroma is really great. You get a smoky, sweet caramel. And there's definitely some cocoa notes here as well. It is a really nice aroma. It's very light. It doesn't overpower. There is almost zero, and I mean zero, alcohol uh, on the smell here. So kind of unique, kind of different. Now, that light smell, you might say, well, it's an 88%, you know, or 88 proof bourbon, Carl. It's not going to have those alcohol notes. And that's true. But as we all know, what does it taste like? So we have a very thin mouthfeel. And uh, I really think that the first sweet note that I'm getting here is that cocoa that's really coming through on the uh, taste as well as the aroma. I enjoy that. There's no burn here as well. It is 88 proof, as I've mentioned now several times, and it's very smooth. Following that cocoa taste, there is a cinnamon bite toward the end. Now, it's not overpowering. It is enough to tingle your tongue. It's not there to burn. So that's kind of, uh, kind of a cool thing. It's letting you enjoy the flavors without that burn. For the finish, you're left with some lingering sweetness that reminds me of... Um, Reminds me of some syrup, like uh, pancake syrup, actually. After you've had it, you know, and you walk off from the table, got a little bit of lingering sweetness here. It's kind of syrupy. And that really hangs around for a while. And I think that really makes this a very smooth sipping bourbon with a little burn. Um, but the finish is still lingering on. So it's got a long finish, but it is sweet and not overpowering. And it doesn't burn. So go figure, right? So if you look back at what Richardson and Metz really wanted to achieve with Old Elk, they wanted a smooth drinking bourbon. And I think they hit that perfectly on the head. I first had Old Elk, I'm going to say four or five years ago. And honestly, I will say that I was not impressed. <laughs> Quite honestly, I thought it tasted like dirty dishwater. I, I did not like it. It was not on my list. I didn't want anything to do with Old Elk. 
Uh, I went to a bourbon tasting right before COVID hit and a distributor friend of mine said, hey, uh, give this a second try. You really need to try it. They've changed something. They've done something differently. Give it a shot. And I'm really glad that I did. Uh, and what I have here bears zero resemblance to the couple of pours I had a few years ago. This is a sweet, easy to drink bourbon that I enjoy. Uh, the weeded version is, uh, if anything, even better. Try out that weeded version. And so this is a really enjoyable bourbon that uh, I would reach for more often. However, it bears a premium price tag. Now, I say premium, we're right at that $50 line. And that's a little too steep for a daily drinker. Uh, and it's a little steep for not carrying higher proof. Uh, the flavors are there, but it, it it's hard to justify that $50 pour or bottle rather, excuse me, uh, you know, for a 88 proof bourbon every day. Doesn't change the fact that it's a good pour. Now, one other thing, just uh, this week actually, and we're in the last week of October of 2021 right now, Old Elk has just released four new bourbons, all aged in premium barrels from Europe. We're talking port barrels, Cognac barrels, sherry barrels, and Armnac barrels. So they have just released, released these this week. So if you're into uh, wine and sherry and port finished barrels of bourbon, if that's your jam, those bottles might be for you. You might want to check those out. Now, ultimately, what am I rating? Old Elk. Guys, I am going to give this a solid four and a quarter Carl stars. It's an easy sipping bourbon with hints of cocoa. I love that. Uh, it's a lot of fun. That's really hard to beat. And, you know, as I always say, that's my opinion. Yours may be different. That's okay. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to stay safe. Peace and happy pours.